Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to be going over the basics of live streaming on a one PC setup using the new NVENC encoder on OBS. We're going to be talking hardware, settings, resolutions, bit rates, and other effects to improve your stream quality. This video is sponsored by NVIDIA and Overclockers, and any of the hardware mentioned in this video will be available in the links below the video. To install OBS to a Windows PC, click on the obsproject.com, click on Windows, and then once the file has downloaded, click on the exe file, and then make sure to allow the program to run. Click next on every pop-up unless you want it to go to a specific drive. Once installed, you should be met with a blank screen like this, and then you go to settings, and then we're going to skip out on general as you don't need to change anything and go straight to output. The first thing I want to talk about is what encoder to use to render your live stream. As of the last three months, I've switched to using the NVIDIA encoder for all of my live streams after using a CPU to stream for over five years. The NVIDIA encoder is unique as it ensures minimum impact to overall performance. Every NVIDIA GPU above a 7 series has a dedicated section just for encoding. When using x264 encoding, a significant portion of processing power is used while streaming, hindering your gaming performance. The newest NVIDIA graphics cards, which is the RTX series and the 1600 series, have even more improvements. Now being able to reproduce the same quality as H.264 medium preset, which was previously only possible with an expensive CPU. It also doesn't matter whether you're using an RTX 2080 Ti or a GTX 1660 Ti, both will provide the same level of quality. In the output settings, we want to set output mode to advanced so we can adjust more settings. We'll set the encoder to NVIDIA NVENC H.264, new, and you can click enforce streaming services, but it's not necessary. Make sure that your rate control is set to constant bitrate, CBR. Variable bitrate causes extreme artifacting. The max bitrate on Twitch is around 6000. However, we will talk about different bitrates and resolutions later. The keyframe interval for Twitch is 2, but it can be different on other platforms. If unsure, just select 0 for auto. Now, if we have a high power PC, we'll set the preset to max quality. However, if you're starting to have performance issues with a lower spec build, then you can just select max performance. Select the profile to high. As for the look ahead option, only turn this on if you're not doing high action games. So FPS games, you'll want this off. As for psycho visual tuning, turn this on if you have a high spec PC for max quality, but if you start running into performance issues, this can be turned off. Set the GPU to zero as default, and set max B frames to 2 as default as well. And once we're finished, make sure to hit apply. After our output settings, this then leads us to our video options. What is the best resolution for my bitrate is a common question. First, we need to find out what your upload speed actually is. To do this, go to Google and type in speed test. The top result should say run speed test. The test will show your download speed first, followed by your upload speed. Once you have your upload speed in MBPS, NVIDIA themselves have released a cheat sheet for the best bitrate to use at what resolution, depending on your upload speed. You can see that the cheat sheet starts at 3 MBPS. That's because any bitrate under that amount will be very difficult to keep at a good quality. So after seeing your available upload speed, you're going to look at what resolution and frame rate you're going to go with. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that even if you have the bitrate for 1080p on Twitch, I still wouldn't recommend it. This is because the max bitrate on Twitch is between 6 and 7,000 Mbps. This is not enough to support solid 1080p streaming. The best thing to do if you want a high quality stream with the lower amount of bitrate on Twitch is to stream at 1600 by 900, which is a happy medium between 720p and 1080. If you have no restrictions on your live streaming service, then by all means stream at higher bit rates. On your video settings, you'll be met with this screen. As for base resolution, this doesn't have to match your desktop resolution. For best performance, use the same base resolution as your output scaled resolution. Thus, your PC does not have to downscale the image it produces, reducing strain on your GPU. If you still want to downscale though, use bilinear sampling for max performance or the Lansco's filter if your PC can handle it. 
and set your FPS to 30 or 60 depending on the resolution and bitrate settings we discussed earlier. Once you're on the audio tab, there'll be many different setups for this, but as long as your sound devices are set up correctly in Windows, you shouldn't have to change much here. To make sure, right click the sound icon in the tray, click on sounds, select your headphones as your default audio playback device, and set your microphone as your default recording device, and you should be good to go. I've added some background noise to show you what it sounds like without a noise gate. To add a noise gate, Right click the cog on your mic aux equalizer, click on filters, this will open up audio filters, add a noise gate. To set it up correctly, we need to look at where our ambient noise without us speaking settles on the mic equalizer. So mine is between 55 and 50. That means I need to set my close threshold to minus 55. and my open threshold to 10 decibels above that, minus 45. Now, you will only hear the background noise whilst I'm speaking. A basic live stream requires two scenes, one for when you're actually gaming and one for when you're not. To add an additional scene, go to the scenes area and click on the plus sign. Then enter the name of the scene, so scene two. Scene 1 is going to be our break screen, so we're going to add a random image for the background. This is one I've made earlier. And then we're going to add our webcam. Video capture device, create new, make sure that your webcam is in, and then boom, we now have a break screen. To set up the gaming screen, we're going to go to our scene 2, we're going to right click, add, game capture, and then OK. We're going to set that up later. If you play your games in full screen, you shouldn't have to change anything from this. And then we're going to add another video capture, but this time we're going to add existing to bring back the device that we've already set. And there we go, we have a basic live stream setup. If I was to open a game in full screen, then it would show up in the background. If you can't get the game to run in full screen, then you can double click on game capture and then capture specific window and select the window once it is open. If we wanna switch between the two scenes that we've created, we can either click between each scene if we have two monitors if we're on the same monitor, we can also set up hotkeys. So if you go to your settings and then hotkeys, here are your two scenes. I can select left arrow as this scene and right arrow as this scene, click apply. And then I can switch between the scenes by using two keys on my keyboard, just like this. Once you've set up your two scenes, you're essentially ready to stream. But first we need to add our stream key. Click on the stream tab on the settings and then select the service that you're using. So I'm using Twitch. You can connect your Twitch account directly to OBS and that avoids using a stream key. However, if you need to use a stream key, somewhere on the service that you're using, you'll have a link to your stream key. This will be a series of numbers and letters that you need to copy and paste into this box. Once you've copied and pasted it into the box, the server that you're using should work with auto but if not, just pick somewhere that's near to where you live. There are also other tools that you can buy to help you with streaming, such as the Elgato Stream Deck, which gives you 15 pre-programmable buttons that allow you to change scenes, remove sources, and many other features that help with streaming. You don't necessarily need a second monitor, but it does help to be able to read chat and to monitor OBS. However, if budget or space is an issue, you can also just use your smartphone by connecting it up to the chat services on your selected platform. You can buy all the products featured in this video, such as the Elgato Stream Deck, the GTX 1660 Ti, and any other streaming hardware that you might need from the Overclockers links in the description down below. I hope this has given you an insight of how to set up a basic live stream. If you've learned anything new from this video today, make sure to leave a like, and if you have any questions regarding live streaming or think I missed something important, then please leave a comment and I'll try to include it.
Thanks for watching and good luck with your live streaming.